Good evening, everyone. Just a real quick announcement. The uh, psalm response this evening is number 46, Every Nation on Earth, and we're going to be using refrain number two. So we just kind of like to rehearse that before Mass starts. So Lisa will play it, and I'll try to sing it, and then you can join me. Justice will flourish in his days, fullness of peace forevermore. In his days, justice will flourish in his days, fullness of peace forevermore. Good evening once again. Our opening song, number 323, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, verses 3 and 4. <clears throat> Good afternoon. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
Let us call to mind our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On that day, a shoot shall sprout from the stump of Jesse, and from his roots a bud shall blossom. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, a spirit of wisdom and understanding, a spirit of counsel and of strength, a spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and his delight shall be fear in the Lord. Not by appearance shall he judge, nor by hearsay shall he decide, but he shall judge the poor with justice and decide a right for the lands afflicted. He shall strike the ruthless with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Justice shall be the band around his waist, and faithfulness a belt upon his hips. Then the wolf shall be the guest of the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the young lion will browse together with the little child to guide them. The cow and the bear shall be neighbors. Together their young shall rest. The lion shall eat hay like the ox. The baby shall play with the cobra's den, and the child lay his hand on the adder's lair. There shall be no harm or ruin on all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be filled with knowledge of the Lord, and waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse set up a signal for the nation. The Gentiles shall seek out for his shelling for his dwelling shall be glorious. The word of the Lord. Justice will flourish in his days, fullness of peace forevermore. In his days, justice will flourish in his days, fullness of peace. With your judgment endow the king, with your justice endow the king's son. With justice he will govern your people, your affected ones with right judgment. In his days, 
justice will flourish in his days fold us a peace forevermore justice shall flower in his days lasting peace to the moon be no more May he rule from sea to sea, from the river to the ends of the earth. In his days, justice will flourish. In his days, fullness of peace forever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, whatever was written previously was written for our instruction, that by endurance and by the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to think in harmony with one another in keeping with Christ Jesus, that with one accord you may, with one voice, glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, then, as Christ welcomed you, for the glory of God. For I say that Christ became a minister of the circumcised to show God's truthfulness, to confirm the promises to the patriarchs, so that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, and as it is written, therefore, I will praise you among the Gentiles and sing praises of your name. The word of the Lord. Be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. John the Baptist appeared preaching in the desert of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It was of him that the prophet Isaiah had spoken when he said, a voice of one crying out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John wore clothing made of camel's hair and had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. At that time, Jerusalem, all Judea, and the whole region around the Jordan were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. 
when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce good fruit as evidence of your repentance. And do not presume to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God can raise up children to Abraham from these stones. Even now the ax lies at the root of the trees. Therefore every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I'm baptizing you with water for repentance, but the one who is coming after me is mightier than I. I'm not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand. He will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into his barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. This morning, I drove over to Clearfield for a funeral, and uh, my, one of my former maintenance men passed away, so I went over there for a funeral. And it was the first time being back in that church since, since I moved here in July. And I was sitting in the sanctuary um, for that funeral this morning, and I just was overcome with a sense of emotion. Um, I was thinking back about all those hours I spent in that sanctuary for a good decade of my life, a third of my life almost. And I just I was thinking about all those hours in there, not just in mass, but just by myself in prayer. At that church, so like the sanctuary was here, over there's the sacristy, go down the hallway, you're in the office, turn left, you're right there in my house. And it's like, really, that wall is right there, would have been like my bedroom wall. So it was real close to the church. So I could just walk out in like my night clothes, you know, at night and just come in here, barefoot, whatever, right? And just be with the Lord. I probably spent hundreds, if not over a thousand hours by myself in that sanctuary over those years and um, just praying and being with the Lord. I was kind of overcome with, with emotion because I realized that it was in, that, in, in those four walls and under that roof in that sanctuary all those years of being a priest that I really became who I am today because of those, those hours, hundreds of hours in prayer, in slippers and robes and night clothes, just at night, middle of the night, just walking over to that church and just being with the Lord. I realized, I think that to myself on the drive back, two hour drive back this morning, of just how much happened to me in the stillness and the silence of that sanctuary. No one saw it. No one, no one like, like, I don't know, help me or whatever. I just spent all those hours in that church, in that sanctuary, just praying. I even, I used to figure eights, and like 58 laps was one mile. So I used to get, get, my, get, my, uh, my, get my steps in, too. So, so I used to, just, used to do, 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 do that, do that, too, in that church. But I just realized that all those hundreds of hours, thousands or more hours, something happened in me, and I grew into becoming who I am as a priest, um, loving my priesthood, my vocation, because of those hours of stillness and silence, often in that darkness of that church. I think about that, and it kind of brought me to the readings today, because we come here to see, today to see the man of John the Baptist. And he, much like the Lord, is really a mystery. We see his birth, like Christ, but then like three decades go by, we don't see what happens. Put the Lord aside. The Baptist, though, we see him, him born um, in the town of town of Ancarum, which is just outside of Jerusalem in the hills. And so Elizabeth and Zechariah had a, a summer home in the hills in Ancarum, and that's where uh, John was born. And so he's born, 
We see the visitation. He leaps for joy. He recognizes the Lord from the womb. And then that's pretty much it. Zechariah is kept quiet for those nine months. Gabriel mutes him. He's unmuted. He, you know, my son. And that's kind of it for three, for 30 years, for three decades. We don't see what happens to him. We don't know how he gets from A to Z. But what must have happened, though, was a lot of time with the, with, with the Lord. A lot of time with God. Not so much his, his, First cousin once removed, I think, Jesus. But just being with the Father, being in hours and hours of silence and stillness and hiddenness in the desert, out in the wilderness, eating bugs and wearing camel hair. Hundreds, if not thousands or tens of thousands of hours over those decades, he spent hidden away in the desert, away in the wilderness, becoming who he needed to become, becoming who the Father needed him to become to announce his Son to the world. John doesn't deliberately choose that. He doesn't just happen onto it. It happens deliberately over long periods of time in stillness, obscurity, and hiddenness. And as we journey in this season of Advent, we're also waiting to celebrate the birth of the God of the universe on earth. Again, it happens in hiddenness and stillness and obscurity, in a dark, dank cave on the outskirts of the field in Bethlehem. The God of the universe becomes incarnate. All that sees it, mom, dad, some shepherds, angels, It's hidden. It's quiet. It's still. And we don't see everything else that happens between then and and this coming to the ministry at the Jordan. It all happens in secret. And that really is the bulk of our lives. So much of our lives happen in secret. Happen in the hiddenness and the stillness and the solitude and the quietness of our hearts. And if we want to become who, we de- who God desires us to become, like the Baptist, we have to love that. We have to cherish that. We have to keep going to him in those hidden, still, quiet, solitude pl- places of solitude where he rests, where he lives, where he exists, where he breathes, where her- his heart beats for love of us we got to go there and find him there. Because that's where he makes us. That's where he transforms us. That's where he creates us to become what we need to become. Not for our sake, but for the sake of the church, the sake of the world, the sake of others. We're called to become heralds and preachers of this good news, to help others carry their crosses to love them and show them the mercy of God, the promise of salvation, the promise of eternal life, to share this good news that the God of the universe loves you. He came to earth. He went to hell and he saves you. He desires you. He wants you for himself. But we can't ever do any of that if we don't just go into the wilderness and to be with him without making fanfare or look at me. We just go into the wilderness, in the desert, in the sanctuary, and just be with him. That's where the magic happens. That's where grace happens. That's where salvation occurs. So may we be people who desire what the Baptist did, go into the wilderness, go into that obscurity, and become what God needs us to become what he wills us to become, what he dreams of us to become, what he created us to be. And let him work on us. Let him change us. And let these weeks of Advent be few weeks of transformation, of metamorphosis, of a transfiguration. We become something new and something different, something bold, something beautiful, something holy. He desires us. Let's go to him.
and let him be the God of the universe. Let us, let us, these beloved children, and just be with him. Let him reveal to us what he wishes to reveal to us. Love you. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Present now our prayers to our Heavenly Father. The response will be sung. For the renewal of the church, that the Lord may sanctify her during this holy season of Advent. We pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus, come. For our nation, that the Lord may guide the minds of those who govern in order to promote the common good and assure justice for all. We pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus, come. For our parish community, that the Lord may draw us together and through the sacramental life of the church. We pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus, come. For the grace of repentance and for freedom from all that impedes our readiness for the kingdom of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus, come. For the safety of those in the military, and for police officers, firefighters, and all first responders, may they be protected by the intercession of St. Michael the Archangel, we pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus, come. That the sick may be comforted and healed, and that those who have died may share the joys of heaven. We pray especially for Frank Eber, for whom this Mass is offered, and for Gilda Hurdle, mother of Linda Haydall, who died this week. We pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Please pause now and add your own personal intentions. We pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Heavenly God, we come before you this evening with great faith, knowing you hear and answer all prayer according to your will. And may we, as your sons and daughters, your holy people, take advantage of these short few weeks of Advent to really go into the wilderness like the Baptist, experience your transforming love for us, your overwhelming desire for us and your abundant mercy towards us 
and experiencing all those things. May we be transformed during these, these short weeks of Advent. So when Christmas comes, we celebrate your birth into the world. We might be unleashed like the Baptist onto the world to share that good news, to share the gospel, and to share your salvation with every human soul. And we ask all of these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our song for the preparation of gifts found in your gather book, number 373. Blow how a rose air blew me. pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all the souls. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. Since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and open for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your praises without end, we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant to be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. story of faith When we eat this bread and drink this cup we proclaim your death, O Lord until you come again Therefore as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Lawrence our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Michael, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. The Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. So with the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For 
Lord Jesus Christ who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. So offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed is called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. song for communion number 836 we remember we believe
in the breaking of the bread we remember in the cup that we receive as our thirst is quenched and our hunger fed we remember and we believe as we take and So we learn to give Like the bread we must break Like wine be poured So that all may live We remember In the breaking of the bread We remember In the cup that we receive at our heart we remember Let us pray. <clears throat> Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be mindful of the confession times. Again, there's every day, uh, Monday to Saturday, all December, confession times. Those calendars are on the table out there. Also, you didn't get a chance to grab uh, uh, devotionals for Advent. There's plenty of them out there on that table. Um, script for sale. They get the raffle out there. So just take advantage of all that's out there and uh, have a great week. Thanks. Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
our closing hymn, number 344, on Jordan's Bank. <laughs> 